Freedom. It's what every human craves. You want freedom from financial debt. You want freedom from responsibilities at home or even at your workplace. And a lot of us find that beginning stage of freedom from our motorcycle, our first ever tiny little motorcycle. And this is the Bajaj Freedom NG04, a humble little 125cc motorcycle that is the world's first mass production CNG motorbike. And it claims to give you the freedom from waiting for your motorcycle to charge and an expensive commute. How well does it do that job? That's today's plan of action. So let's take this bike out for a spin and see what the Bajaj Freedom is all about. The Bajaj Freedom is designed to absolutely disrupt the most competitive segment in the country, the 125cc commuter segment. And it is targeting all of those bikes that run on petrol itself, which is why it has all of the design cues and even uh, the characteristics that you would want from a super practical 125cc motorcycle that is just meant for commuting and hardcore commuting that is. You can see the first cue of design that I that catches my eye is the largest seat in the segment and it could possibly be the largest seat in production for a motorcycle. Otherwise, the motorcycle looks very rudimentary and only when you start paying attention to the bike, you do see that uh, there are a lot of changes because it is a CNG motorcycle. Uh, at first glance, you don't get to understand where the tank actually is for the CNG, but it's right below the seat and it takes a little bit of the tank too. That's why the tank still looks rather rudimentary and around the tank is uh, precisely where the two liters of petrol go for the motorcycle. On further inspection, you'll also see that the engine is horizontally mounted. So that gives a very nice center of gravity to the bike and it also allows for much more space to be compacted like that. So you do get 170 mm of ground clearance and the seat is a little tall because of the tank. So now the seat height sits at 825 mm, but the seat is rather narrow. So you can be quite comfortable, even though if you're just uh, average heighted, you still be, will be perfectly fine riding the motorcycle. I also love the way the swing arm has been designed. It looks like a longer swing arm thanks to the red monolink suspension right in the middle sitting on top of the beginning of the swing arm and uh, yeah it looks really nice especially with that tire hugger it's a shame that they have to give it with the sari guard because i'm pretty sure if you remove that sari guard the combo of the trellis subframe in the back and the tire hugger and the long-ish swing arm it would look absolutely stunning from the back but yeah what can you do overall it is a stout motorcycle and it does feel like that on the road but there are a couple of issues, so let's take it for a spin and talk just a little bit about the discrepancies of the bike. The Freedom is a very comfortable bike to saddle on and it is also a very friendly motorcycle. The clutch is easy, the throttle is friendly and the engine is smooth, butter smooth. Whether you ride it on CNG or petrol, the power delivery of the 125cc engine is linear. But the switch is not as unnoticeable as you would imagine. The Freedom's fuel mapping is super smooth and the response from the throttle is fantastic when you're on petrol mode. But I did feel the fueling to be quite notchy while accelerating in CNG mode, which is very noticeable. The low end does have a decent amount of surge, enough for taking heavy loads or passengers through steep hills, but what impressed me was how frugal and economical the bike turns out to be. With a 2kg tank of CNG, the bike is capable of achieving over 200 kilometers, and just 2 liters of petrol takes you 130 kilometers. Considering the current CNG and petrol prices, this amounts to just around a rupee per kilometer, which sounds affordable AF. And the good news doesn't end there. The chassis is proper stuff. 
the motorcycle feels premium and very robustly built thanks to its trellis frame and subframe. Vibrations are not really noticeable anywhere apart from the foot pegs and the balance of the bike is super friendly, making this a comfy and easy going city commuter. Now, the seat height of the Bajaj Freedom sits at 825 mm, which could be a little daunting to some average height riders. However, I can report that it's not that difficult and thanks to uh, the really long seat, it gives you a lot of leverage to find your sweet spot regardless of how tall you are. Um, the one bad thing about the ergonomics is that the lower half of your body is a little cramped if you are on the taller side. I am pretty much at my sweet spot and I'm pretty sure that if someone is uh, maybe two inches taller than me, they might have a little bit of issue with uh, the ergonomics on the bottom. However, the upper half is a fairly comfortable position. You are really relaxed sitting in an upright position and you also have quite a lot of leverage to move aside. The handlebars are sitting quite close to you and also quite high so that your arms are not stressed at all. So long commutes could be really easy, especially inside the city and uh, maneuvering is also very easy at slow speeds because you've got so much leverage on the handlebar. So yeah, it is a really nice commuter, but um, it is not supposed to be a very committed position. So you're not going to be very flattered by how it feels under your bum. Otherwise, smooth bike, comfortable position. Now time to address the elephant in the room or the large tank in the motorcycle. You might be wondering that how safe is it actually? Well. Bajaj claim that it is very safe and they've tested for it. Not only have they passed the AIS tests with flying colors, they've also done some extra tests on the motorcycle to ensure that the tank is always going to be intact regardless of what happens to the motorcycle. They've done frontal collision tests, pendulum tests from the side, from the front. Uh, they've run a truck over uh, the tank basically a 10 ton truck and nothing has happened to the tank and to the lines making sure that you are going to be safe regardless of whatever happens the bike is never going to explode on you and that is a guarantee that Bajaj give you which is a really really difficult thing to achieve and that's why this bike took at least four years to develop according to Bajaj and it is very visible that this is a very well thought of process and a product that has been designed to absolutely disrupt a segment and I wouldn't be surprised if there were more motorcycles coming in this specific product type which is super impressive and it could just be the future. Considering the amazing price point the Freedom 125 has been introduced at, which is only 95,000 rupees for the base variant, it makes the product pretty much a no-brainer for someone who is just looking to commute in the city. But there are still a couple of things that they probably should have given. Like for example, a gauge for the petrol tank or at least some sort of indication. The cluster itself is pretty straightforward, nothing really to complain about. The lack of a kill switch also seems pretty annoying considering most scooters nowadays come with it, but you do get Bluetooth connectivity with the bike. Now the bike doesn't come with ABS or traction control. While traction control might be okay to skip over considering the bike makes less than 10 horsepower, maybe ABS would have been beneficial because it's always good to know you have that extra safety net. But I'll be honest, all of these small negatives I just mentioned are practically nitpicks because all of the other competitors are rather lackluster and miss out on a lot of cool features and design potential. When a brand wants to pioneer a segment, it requires a lot of research and development, a lot of testing, a lot of investment and Bajaj have taken all of their resources and actually come out with a product that is viable to the masses. And the masses and the numbers that we are talking about are immense, which is why this product needed to absolutely slap. And that's exactly what it does. It is a very nice product for what it intends to be doing. 
so it is an amazing commuter it is super comfortable it is very spacious and it is really frugal making this a really cheap motorcycle to own and run and maintain this is definitely going to be considered by anybody who wants to buy a 125 cc commuter and their priority is basically getting the most out of your buck and it's wrapped in such a stylish uh, persona that you will definitely have your eyes set on to it so what i would suggest is take it for a test ride see how it feels on cng and on petrol both and do let us know how it feels i really think it's a very nice beginning and i am sure that competition should come along with it and if not bajaj should be making more iterations of it because i absolutely love the idea on that note thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in the next one and do let us know your thoughts on the bajaj freedom see you